The views expressed on the Midvale Main Street Theater podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of the Midvale Main Street Theater, its owners, advertisers, or volunteers. What's the word that I'm looking for? Jackass? What? <laughs> long as I can remember that I would annoy the shit out of people with wanting them to listen to me mm. or watch me dance. I remember being so close with, I kind of grew up with those people. I remember being so sad when I wasn't doing that anymore and that's what attracted me so much to theater. My mom and I went and saw a production of Cinderella and I can specifically remember how I felt just sitting at Bingham watching those shows. I was like, I cannot wait to be up on that stage. But I went to my audition and we, I turned all the lights out. I sat on the stage in a chair and Shut shined up. a flashlight you did, on my okay. face. This is a perfect little cliffhanger. Good morning, Midvale. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Hey, what's up? How's it going? This is Michael, the host. Um, I just wanted to check in with you guys really quick, um, go over the one bit of news item that we had this week, and then we'll jump into part one of our episode. So yeah, the biggest news is that Mamma Mia tickets are now on sale. Um, if you go to midvaletheater.com, you can go ahead and purchase tickets. And yeah, I mean, that's super exciting because I'm, I, I've been hearing so much about this production and everything that I am so excited to see it. So go ahead, grab your tickets. I know that these shows are going to sell out for sure. So might as well get them in advance for sure. And yeah, <laughs> like I say, the, the we only have that one bit of news item this week. So why don't I go ahead and jump into the episode itself? Um, yeah, this week is part one of my interview with the beautiful, lovely and talented Ashley Howell. Um, it was just one of those things where I, we talked for so long and she had so much to say and so many stories to tell that I just felt like we couldn't keep it in one episode. So, um, yeah, this is part one where she kind of goes over her early life. She goes over her um, her experiences in an acting, singing, performing troupe, as well as goes into high school and kind of goes over why she wanted to do theater so much and what she gets out of it. Um so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy, and then look out for, in two weeks, uh, part two, where we kind of go deeper into her her Midvale roles and everything like that. It's going to be super awesome. I hope you guys enjoy it. So yeah, without further ado, here is part one with Ashley Howell. Ooh, ooh, if you put that in there, Michael, <laughs> You already did it. You <laughs> it is burned into this if recording you... now, so. <laughs> Do it, and I will murder you we'll see i will murder you <laughs> i oh, knew the man. second that i opened up my mouth to do that that it was <laughs> just the worst idea well yeah is that good no what do you need adjusted on i it? need it lower lower <laughs> <laughs> for the record <laughs> ashley claims she's not an idiot <laughs> and yet she still <laughs> struggles to funk with the microphone. <laughs> I have never been happier that struggles to funk gets to be in my episode. I know. It's, I'm it's so beautiful. happy. <laughs> oh, it's happening. I don't even know how I could sit across from someone so smart. <laughs> Let alone be married to someone as smart as me. Right. Well, that actually kind of segues perfectly into how I wanted to start this episode. <gasps> oh. Yep. So anyway, hey guys, welcome to the Midvale Main Street Theater Podcast. I am sitting here with Ashley Howell, which is crazy. Um, she, so her and I are married, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> but. Right. Okay. So um, yeah, I, I wanted to have you on because you, you know, obviously I. Complete you. Yeah, I can exactly. <laughs> no, but since we're married, you know, I've heard so many like crazy stories and I just want to kind of pick your brain about some things. So, yeah. Um, but I did want to mention that since we're married and since I know all this kind of stuff, I'm going to try and like approach it from someone like I'm going to forget who you are and I'm just going to try and, you know, try to get to know you all over again, if that makes sense. You're going to forget me. Right. Mm -hmm. So you ready? Mm -hmm. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. So, since I don't know who you are, 
since this is the first time we've ever spoken, correct? Correct. correct. So, like, one... What was your name again? Michael. Michael. Yes. Got it. Burn it into your brain, because we're going to be here for a little bit. <sighs> no promises. <laughs> anyway, um, from zero to 100%, how satisfied are you with your husband in bed? <laughs> I'm going to say I'm about 104% satisfied. Oh, <laughs> nice. Hey. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. I'd, congratulations about your 104% husband. <laughs> yes. So anyway, that was my, my weird, awkward way of kind of transitioning into what I'm talking about. Like, I, I'm going to try and approach this interview with the thought that I don't know most of these stories already. Do you feel good, though? <laughs> Do you feel good about that answer I gave? I I Just couldn't. like from a third party standpoint, do you feel good about that answer? I mean, I'm very happy for you. Right. Yes. I'm just pushing for that 105% though, you know, so maybe Never satisfied. Maybe we'll get there. I hate people like that. You know, who's not that way? Mm. My husband, Michael. Oh, really? So yeah, really? Okay. Well, he just has zero, zero work ethic and drive <laughs> is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> The fifth. It's the fifth on that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So yes. Anyway, my guest this week is Ashley Howell. She's performed at Midvale. <laughs> She's performed at Midvale for is it eight years now? Oh. Was it 2010 when All Shook Up happened? Oh, I am not the person to ask okay. that question well, to. I'm it, gonna say like 2011. Okay. I'm thinking more like 2011. Sure. Seven solid years. 2011, 2012, something mm -hmm. right around there. Perfect. Well, and you've seen her. She has played parts such as Mimi Marquez in Rent, uh, Lucy the Slut in Avenue Q, mm -hmm. Roxy in Chicago, and most recently she was What's Her Name or What Her Name. Was it What Her Name or What's Her Name in American <laughs> there's, Idiot? There's no way to know. Right, Ryan? <laughs> anyway, so perfect. Well, yeah, um, like I say, I just wanted to kind of pick your brain. You got some interesting stories and an interesting little story yourself about your, your life and how you came to Midville. So, so yeah, why don't we just uh, jump on into it? How are you, how are you doing? It's, it's a little late tonight. Are you sleepy at all or anything? No. Perfect. Good. We just put Salem down and we put him down at like 1130. So we're going to be, he's like a night owl night like his podcast. mama. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Well, um, yeah, I mean, with a really weird transition, why don't we just start from the beginning for you? Um, you were born and raised here in Utah, right? Yes. In Sandy. So yeah, you have three brothers, right? Yes. One older, two younger. Yes. Perfect. And that was it. Um, yeah. How was, how was growing up for you? Uh, how would you describe like toddler BAMs if you could, if you remember back on that? Um, for those who don't know, BAMs is, that might be confusing oh, for right. people. Shoot. <laughs> that, oh, okay. So and that's actually a really funny story <laughs> yes. that we could maybe disclose in this episode, possibly. Perfect. Well, yeah, we'll get there. But okay. BAMs, I'm sorry, is what I call my wife, Ashley. And then she calls me... Hams. Hams, which sounds like a fat hammy. joke, but it's not. <laughs> Michael's very sensitive to fat jokes, but we <laughs> won't go down that lane just yet. Just yet. We'll wait till Michael's episode with himself. <laughs> where right. He where I interview myself. His biggest fears, <laughs> which are fat jokes. Right. Perfect. Anyway, so describe baby Ashley to me. <gasps> oh, I feel uh, that's such a better question for my parents, but mm. I feel like I was, I feel like. I was pretty true to who I am today, honestly. Okay. I was always singing, dancing from what I understand. I've definitely been told I was the toughest of my parents' four children to raise. How so? What do you mean by that? I think I was just the most, probably the most stubborn, just like the least easygoing. I think I, and there's like the good and the bad with that. I think I was passionate, but mm. I was also probably, I don't know. I just was kind of a stubborn, like... What's the word that I'm looking for? Jackass? What? <laughs> <laughs> no. You can't talk about babies like that. I'm and sorry. I was a baby at some point too, Michael. Right. Sure. I don't know if you know, but <laughs> cool. no, just like a very um, well, like like, strong-willed child. Yeah. Perfect. It's, it sounds like you you knew what you liked and knew what you wanted to do and you were just not right. going to be talked out of I feel of like I must have been like, like born performing. Gotcha. Because I've always heard like as long as I can remember that I would annoy the shit out of people with wanting them to 
listen to me mm. or watch me dance and those gotcha. types of things, which is actually really funny because I'm not nearly as confident anymore, but <laughs> I'm still true to the performing Ashley that I've always been. So Right. Gotcha. So do you have any like thoughts or memories about those, those times? Do you remember like going up to people and annoying them? Do you have any stories that you could tell about that? Sure do. Perfect. And I have one word for you and it's Peyra. Peyra. Okay. The infamous Peyra. So yes. Apparently, when I was younger, I used to put on a purple wig and insist <laughs> and insist that people call me Peyra. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it had something to do with giving me money, which little baby, you guys still. Mm. So don't let your minds wander with that. Oh, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, again, I feel like my parents could tell us more about this. And mm. I honestly would love to hear more like in-depth stories of my right. childhood. I don't feel like I've really had much of that from my parents actually mm. I feel like if I was to ask like specific questions they would tell me more about my younger self but otherwise I really don't know like specifics gotcha. but I do know about the purple wig there's pictorial is that a word proof, it is now for sure <laughs> proof of me in my purple wig right um with the headline Peyra so so the name Peyra it's my do you alter even know where it came ego from? I don't but I love it so much <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> I love it. And I feel like Para needs to come back and like be your persona for one oh, of the yeah. characters in Midvale for sure. Oh yeah. She, it's like a light purple, like lavender purple wig. It's mm -hmm. like a bob. Right. And it's just beautiful. Gotta bring it back. Absolutely. For yeah. sure. Well, cool. Um, and so I'm sure that your parents saw these like performances and just like your love for doing this. So is that kind of what brought you into like encore as we kind of go? And again, I'm kind of leading you, but um, is that kind of what brought you into that singing, dancing troupe? So I did a few things when I was younger. I, I'm actually wondering if they started me out with sports. I can't mm. really remember the timeline, but I know that I played some basketball. I know that I played plenty of kickball. I played some soccer. Okay. Um, and I took ballet for like a split second, which makes me so sad. I wish we'd, um, we tried maybe like a different studio or a different mm. teacher Okay. because I don't think we had the best experience. It was, I know it was a neighbor of mine um, who I was taking ballet from in her basement studio. Gotcha. And I wish we'd pursued that more because one thing that I've learned is just, I feel like I, I feel like my abilities would be different had we like gone a different route mm -hmm. with my dancing when I was younger Okay. And how we like really honed in on that because yes, I did encore, but that was, as my parents would tell you way more for my friendships mm. and, um, the fun that we had traveling and the fact that I could sing and dance at the same time, because for a minute we tried to get me more into like technical dancing and competing competition dance and all of that. And, right. um, I just missed my friends so much that I wanted to go back to encore. I missed singing because as we know, I love to sing as well. And, um, apart from the theater, there's not a lot of opportunity to sing and dance at the same time. And that was what encore was for me. I'm not totally sure where I was going with that, but I did do sports and we did some ballet. Um, and I feel like shortly after that, we found encore for me. I feel gotcha. like I was like seven or eight. Gotcha. So. Okay. Perfect. And it, when you say that you did this, these sports and ballet, it just, it didn't click for you or your friends weren't involved in this. Why did you not stick with those things rather than? I actually loved doing the sports. I feel like I can't, I don't have memories of disliking any of that. Um, I was a really short girl. I was like a really petite child. And so I feel like basketball probably wasn't in the cards for me. <laughs> sure. Um, I don't feel like sports were... I don't feel like I was, like you say, I don't feel like I was necessarily built for sports. Mm. So, and. I don't know. I see your guns right here. And right. Got some, got well, some. those are from carrying around your gigantic baby. <laughs> Our gigantic baby. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, cool. Anyway, um, you get into Encore and kind of, could you just kind of describe what Encore is to people that aren't really familiar with that yes. aspect of performing? Yeah. So. Encore reminded me, I remember being just so close with, I kind of grew up with those people. There was a pretty particular group of people that I went through all of those stages, groups of Encore with. Um, and I feel like, this is jumping ahead of myself, but I feel like that's actually what, I, I remember being so sad when I wasn't doing that anymore. And that's what attracted me so much to theater. But mm. jumping back is I wanted that again, that like feeling of family and those close friends and 
um, we got to do a lot of fun things. Right. We performed, it's kind of funny to me now, but we performed um, at schools was a mm-hmm. big thing. In malls was a big thing. Um, mm-hmm. Retirement homes, that was like a, a specific one that we did every year. And um, <laughs> I can't wait for your episode with Cassidy Ross because <laughs> she's going to be able, you've got to ask her about Encore because right. she's going to she's going to be able to. Well, you're kind of hitting all the aspects of Encore that I wanted to talk to you about. But um, just to kind of jump back, Encore, it's a singing and dancing troupe. Right. right? I guess they never like specifically answered that, but it's boys and girls. So it's mm-hmm. co-ed. Right. Um, and it's, yeah, so they would, it was singing and dancing, just kind of performing and all the kids would have solos and they would have kind of like a, this is amazing that I, I'm going to get into this because <laughs> actually my like love of Mamma Mia kind of started with Encore. Okay. I always knew ABBA music and all of that, but um, we had a Mamma Mia medley. Right. My, one of my last years of Encore. And so it was always a medley that was, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It always had like a theme. Okay. So we'd have like a rock medley or we'd have like, I don't even, we had, we had a Lion King medley. (laughs) We had like, I had a Tarzan medley once. So Disney medleys, rock medleys, ABBA medleys. Sure. Gotcha. Okay. So it was like half an hour to an hour, just singing, dancing, kind of just a little show that you guys would put on. Yeah. It, maybe, yeah, like an hour, hour and a half. Okay. Wow. Okay. We rehearse probably like three times a week, three or four. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Well, and, um, from what I gather, you did that for quite a bit. Yeah, I did it for a long time. So I was probably like 16 or 17 when I stopped doing it. Okay. And I actually just have to get this little bit of info in there. Okay. I stopped before my close group of friends got to go on their, um, Hawaii (laughs) tour, (laughs) which made me, I got to go to some amazing places, you guys, but, um, yeah, I missed out well, on the Hawaii tour, which was heartbreaking. Wasn't for that me. just literally the year after you quit? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> but the year before I'd gotten to go to New York, that was my last. And it cool. happened to be over my, what, 17th? I want to say 17th birthday. So that was awesome. Sure. Sure. That just like prepped me for theater life, I feel like. And I didn't mm. even know it. Perfect. Well, cool. Um, and that's actually the next part I wanted to talk to you about because you've mentioned as much. You said that you've been to crazy places you've already mentioned san antonio and new york in this interview do you like do you have a list or what were your favorite places that you you went to i don't even know what the reason is for this but i've always i just remember that my favorite tour was hands down san antonio for me Mm. um which i don't even like i say i don't even specifically remember why um we went to washington dc new york i know that my first one was to nevada to las vegas Mm. um I feel like there's one more in there somewhere. Sure. I mean, the the, the San Antonio, I'm sure Washington, D.C., New York, those are kind of the ones that stand out in your mind. Right. Gotcha. Cool. Um, do you have any, like, memories of performing there? Or, like, because what you're saying is that you perform mostly in, like, parks and public venues yeah. and things like that. So, yeah, do you have any, like, crazy, crazy stories or anything like that? I feel like, yeah, Washington, D.C., this is so funny because I feel like we all ended up referring to that tour as fat camp for us okay? because we didn't have a, um, we didn't have a bus system for that like whole tour. We ended up walking so much more than I think we'd planned to, Mm. or maybe that was the plan. I could be wrong, but (laughs) we walked so much that I swear all of us lost like a good amount of weight. It was so hot. I remember performing in front of the Lincoln Memorial Mm. and it was just scorching hot. And there were a couple of the boys that were in. So when we go on tours, there were always two groups usually to a tour. Okay. Um, so I actually went to New York with Cassidy. Her and I weren't in the same group, but we were in around the same age group. So we, we toured together to New York, which I love looking back on with her. Right. Um, Tammy Ross was there. Mm. I think Steve was there. Okay. Um, and there's a crazy story with that too. There was like a shooting right down the street from us in, in, New, in York. New York. Yeah. Wow. We were in the Bronx. Oh, um, such a sketchy area. And Tammy and Steve will tell you, they're like, we had no idea why we were there. Like it was ridiculous that they even took us there in the first place. Mm. But there are some crazy stories. Yeah. I've got an awesome story about getting super sick in San Antonio, puking in the bushes mm. at, um, Fiesta, Texas, six flags mm. in San Antonio. Um, but so anyway, back to Washington, DC, 
there were two groups to a tour, and I remember some of the boys um, in Encore were actually in both of those groups. Okay. And I remember they had to perform like with each of us, so they were dancing a lot more out in the heat, and mm-hmm. people were getting sick. Um, I know one of my friends passed out. Jeez. And had to be like driven back to wherever we were staying. Wow. But that's just, that's a funny joke that we make is that we had no idea that our parents were sending us to fat camp for right. that, that <laughs> tour. Oh, I remember the other one just mm. out of nowhere. We went to San Francisco as oh, well. And cool. we, I had to bring that up because we um, got to see Alcatraz. Mm. And you've and, talked about how much you oh, love yeah, Alcatraz. Oh yeah, Fisherman's Wharf, like we. Yeah. Right. Cool. Okay, awesome. That. Well, and that's so cool that you had the opportunity as like a younger person to go do the, all of that. You know, oh, yeah. For sure. Cool. Um, so you say that you did Encore all the way up through 17. When you're 17 years old. Um, so that includes going through junior high and high school with this, right? Right. Okay. Early high school. Right. Sure. Um, so kind of branching into your education and everything like that, did you... was drama or theater or the musicals or anything was that kind of on your radar before going into high school or was that something that kind of just dropped into your lap that was always super on my radar I remember um I remember specifically a handful of the shows that I saw at Bingham Mm. um and they were all at Bingham because like I said my family had been in the South Jordan area I knew that's where I was going to go to high school if we'd stayed in that area I remember going on, I think a couple were field trips. I went in um, maybe with my junior high, but okay. I know it was with like through the school system. I went and I saw um, Pirates of Penzance at Bingham. I saw Bye Bye Birdie. And I know that um, my mom and I went and saw a production of Cinderella. And I can specifically remember how I felt just sitting in the audience at Bingham watching those shows. I was like, I cannot wait to be up on that stage. Mm. Okay, perfect. Well, then, yeah, let's just jump into high school. Was it, they only did 10, 11, 12 at your high school as well, as far as grades, right? Right. Okay. So coming in 10th grade, what was the show that they were doing? <laughs> they did. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, my sophomore show was Music Man. Okay. Music Man. Yeah. Fun fact about that is that I'm pretty sure I was the only sophomore girl in that production. Wow. Which felt awesome. That was like my claim to fame at Bingham, you guys, in my high school (laughs) year was that I was the only sophomore girl in that production. And I think it was literally because I was still really small Mm. and they casted me as more of like a child part. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Hey. I was like somebody's daughter and I loved it. You guys, I loved every second of that. And it's not one of my favorite shows. Not at all, but it was a great experience for me. Cool. Well, yeah. I mean, if you if you have the the body type or whatever else, you just got to kind of run with it in theater sometimes. So the fact that you were so small, got into the show, still awesome. Loved sure. it. It was like right before I got a growth spurt and became average height. So mm-hmm. I was like really living it up with my right. like below <laughs> average. Sure. Cool. Yeah. So coming in to this, this is your first show ever, right? No, actually. So I was in um, a production of Annie with Up With Kids. Okay. And I'm going to say that I was probably like 11 or 12. Gotcha. Okay. So it had been a little bit at least though between the two. Oh yeah, for okay. sure. Perfect. So that was like a random, yeah, yeah, show that I was in years before I ever got really involved in theater. And an amazing fact about that is that I was one of the orphans that actually aren't even written into the script. Like they had mm. so many kids that they just made up right. so um, it's like, orphan names and mine's amazing. Okay. Um, my character name was shoe shine <laughs> and I literally carried around a shoe shine kit. You guys. Wow. In Annie and shined the shoes of the men in that show. What a creative name for your right? character. Then. Shoe shine. <laughs> like, wow. Who knew? I just, that's so random. <laughs> so weird. Anyway, I'm going to um, start putting that on my resume. Can we yeah. revise my mama Mia bio <laughs> actually <laughs> to, to say recent credits include <laughs> <laughs> shoe shine <laughs> in Annie. Yes. Perfect. Well, cool. So you're coming into this show and I'm sure it was all kind of a new experience. Um, do you remember like any of the first rehearsals or meeting the director or any of the, the castmates or anything like that? Yeah. So I was in at least theater one. I already knew the director. Um, okay. So you did take classes. Oh yeah. School. Okay. Oh yeah. I was um, under the impression for whatever reason you didn't. But yeah, yeah. No, I think I took one through three. I didn't do anything extra as far as like a musical theater class or a productions class. I honestly don't even remember what the other classes were outside of theater one to three. Gotcha. Because I don't, yeah, I didn't take any of those, but, um, so I took 
theater one through three and I knew, um, I, I was probably in the middle of theater one at this time. Mm. Um, and the theater teacher's name, I believe now is Mrs. Robbins. Okay. Yeah. She went by a different name back then, but, um, she's been at Bingham high school for a long time. Do you know if she's still there? Yeah. I'm pretty sure she's still there. Wow. Yeah. Gotcha. And she's fantastic. Sure. Um, I loved her and yeah, so I knew her pretty well before I auditioned for the show. I still remember, I still remember going and looking at the cast list up on the door mm. of the pit, which the pit was, um, where her classroom was. Okay. I believe. I think it was called the pit. Ooh, I think it was the pit. Are you being a bad alum right now? Yeah, I really, <laughs> really am you guys. Oh man. Um, well, it was, it was what? 50 years ago. Now, it right? was like a million years ago <laughs> because I'm like ancient now. Yeah. But no, she would post the um, cast lists up on her doors mm -hmm. on the outside. And I, I don't know if she would lock herself away inside of her classroom. That's what I would have done. I'm pretty sure she would just like hurry and post it and then peace out because she didn't want to want to have to deal with the same thing with my teacher. Crazy. For sure. yeah, yeah. High school kids. Um, but I remember seeing my name like at the bottom of the list, but just like being elated about it. Awesome. I will never forget. My mom was picking me up. So guys, maybe... I wouldn't have been 15 in high school, right? I don't know, to be I honest. I don't think so, but I wasn't driving. I do remember that because they came to pick me up. They were... So you probably actually were because... I was on the younger side for sure. I have a right. summer and, birthday. So. And I remember in high school, I we couldn't I couldn't go to any of the dances the first year because I wasn't uh, wasn't 16. So I'm sure that was I the might have you. been because I know that I graduated 17. So I probably was 15. Sure. Perfect. Yeah, so I wasn't driving. My parents were waiting for me out front, um, my mom, and I remember seeing the cast list and being super shocked. Right. I was really surprised about it, and I was so excited. I think I had like three lines. That's and so I cool. was so excited. Well, I'm sure that as a as a sophomore coming into a show, like even just having that little bit of... Yeah. It was totally legitimizing, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, a few of my encore friends, male friends were in that. Mm. Um, like I said, claim to fame was that I was only female sophomore, but That's there were right. some <laughs> male sophomore friends <laughs> um, that happened to be encore friends. I remember CJ and Brian were in that production. Sorry if I missed anybody else. <laughs> um, there were other encore people for sure, but those were the ones that... I kind of grew up with that were right. in my same grade. Cool. Um, yeah, super fun experience. And it was totally different than anything I'd done before sure. high school. Um, so what about it was different and what was hard about or challenging, I should say about coming into rehearsing a show rather than rehearsing something for encore. I felt so overwhelmed by all of it. Hmm. You know, I was like totally the newbie. I was like such a youngin, and, um, I remember trying to like always be on my best behavior and I'm pretty sure I was probably, that would be hilarious if like Mrs. Robbins came back and she's like, no, you weren't. You were super loud and <laughs> annoying. But I feel like I was probably more like on the quiet side. Mm. Um, maybe not backstage because like I said, I don't usually have a problem making friends. I right. probably was like socializing. But no, I remember that the rehearsals were like later at night. It was crazy to still be at school later at night. I mm. remember feeling like the, um, I remember feeling like the stage was huge and just the whole process was crazy to me um I hadn't really had like a character name or like any lines before so to me that was so cool for sure and all the cool. kids looked a million years older to me like Isn't they it? do when they're seniors exactly. and you're like a baby sophomore and everybody looks like they're like 25 too at that time mm -hmm. and I was like oh you're so old and you're so wise yeah <laughs> for sure please teach me yes Seriously. I get you for sure well um so your sophomore year, you did the musical. You did, it sounds like theater one, maybe a couple other classes, but... Um, theater one through three. You did all three of that first yeah. year. Gotcha. Okay. No, no. Sorry. Not that first year. Okay. But throughout high school. Yeah. Gotcha. Perfect. So anyway, coming into junior year, did you do any anything else besides the, the musicals themselves or what, like how involved were you with the theater? So I was definitely taking... I don't know if it was two and three at that point. I don't remember at what points I went through theater one through three, mm -hmm. but I know I was definitely in theater classes um, and I wanted to audition for, I don't know if it was like the winter, the fall, whatever show that they were doing, but they were doing the crucible. Okay. And I definitely wanted to audition for that. That's like right up my alley. I mean, yeah, I was going to say it right makes up sense my with, alley. with yes. who you are as a person. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Um, I wasn't even crazy familiar with the show, but I knew the tone of the show and I was like, yes, 
Right. Like I need to be involved in this. So when you heard that they were going to do the crucible, how did you feel? So excited. But I I wouldn't even say I was super hopeful though. I'd always Mm. heard that my, um, that the theater director was definitely, she gave priority to seniors. That was always a big thing at Bingham. I don't know Mm. if that's a big thing everywhere, but she was very, um, she was all about giving the seniors priority before they were out of high school. So I feel like a lot of those, like not the musicals, but a lot of those other shows, it was sometimes only it seniors. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so just a random question with that. Do you, looking back, did you ever feel like that was kind of unfair of her to do or did you, did it make sense to you? Um, I feel like that's just what I knew. Okay. And I feel like for that reason, I was probably looking forward to senior year. Right. But it never, I never was like, that sucks and that's not fair. But I, I also was like, I'm going to try anyway. Sure. Like when I heard about Crucible, I was like, yep, I'm still going to be there. Yeah, hell yeah. We'll see how that goes. Doing it anyway. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So coming into that audition then, how did it go for you? Okay. So <laughs> this is probably my favorite high school experience story. So... <laughs> Um, to prepare for this audition, I was trying to find a good monologue. Um, and I remember actually kind of like teaming up with my dad, mm. which I love that he was involved in helping me do this. Um, going off on a tangent about my dad, my dad's always actually been a super big supporter of me performing awesome. in any aspect. Sure. I can literally remember um, my dad bought me my first karaoke machine. My mm. dad used to actually stand outside my door and listen to me sing. So he was the first and only payroll groupie is what right? it sounds like. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, of course my mom was though too. So gotcha. Okay. she had to be supportive. Mm-hmm. No, but my dad, um, he would stand outside my room, which sounds kind of funny, but he would listen to me sing. And I can remember several in- instances of my dad coming in and asking me if I, uh, was plugging one ear to listen to myself sing or if I had put a cotton ball in my ear wow. um, to hear when I was like flat or sharp. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad's not any kind of music instructor, you guys. Like he's not even, but he, he's not super trained, but my dad actually can sing. Okay. Um, so you're, what you're saying is Greg Brereton needs to be on Midvale stage right? at some point. <laughs> yeah. My dad has actually got a great voice. Um, and even on a further tangent, I promise I'll get back to this, but sure. my dad taught me rhythm from a really early age. Okay. Um, my family used to be really big on turning all of the lights out, playing 80s classic rock music hmm. in the dark. And we would all um, just kind of lounge out, like literally in the pitch black, my family. Wow. And listen so loudly to this music. And um, we would sing and we would like that was like a family bonding time for us. And I remember, yeah, I remember times literally like laying on my dad's belly. Like we'd be laying like stomach to stomach. I remember times laying on the couch with my dad and him um, kind of like tapping out rhythm to me on my arm, on my back. Mm. And he would have me do the same. And he kind of like taught me rhythms. Do you know why? Or was it just like a bonding thing for him or did it, do you know if it was important for him to teach you guys about that or anything? I don't anything? know that I, that okay. was with, I don't know that that was a thing with any of my brothers. Hmm. I feel like that was a thing like specifically with me and my dad. And I don't know if that's, yeah, I don't know if that's because like I said, performing's always been a thing for me. Right. I feel like I was always trying to be singing or dancing and I wanted people to be watching gotcha. um, when I was younger. I mean, I've become a little bit more shy and reserved about it since then Mm. and more anxiety filled. But when I was younger, I was literally fearless as far as performing, which I kind of miss that spirit sometimes, but he knew that about me. So I think he was just bonding with me through passions that I had that he shared. Mm -hmm. So bringing that back into the crucible, then you were kind of tying those two together. Yeah, He helped me um, to pick my monologue for that. Cool. Do you you Um, remember what it was or anything? Absolutely. Okay. It was a monologue from Blair Witch Project. Oh, cool. Which I love so much. (laughs) Um, Have you seen the original Blair Witch? That's what's amazing, you guys, is no. (laughs) I haven't seen it. I love it. I mean, I've seen the the remake. Yeah. I literally have only not seen the Blair Witch Project because I've been told by so many people that it's so boring. And it's literally been just that I've not found like found a time to sit down and watch it and appreciate it for what it is. Well, I'm going to say something controversial. Don't. It's not. It's not scary. Blair Witch Project is not scary. Well, I feel like I know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I 
don't usually find myself scared anyway. Right. So I feel like I would like to watch it just because it, it's a classic. But yeah. my dad, like I knew the whole storyline of it. I knew exactly um, what the context was of, of the monologue I chose. It was, um, I, it was when a girl is, she's, um, she's got a flashlight and she's kind of recording herself talking right. and she thinks it's going to be, I think like a last, like her last words, mm-hmm. right? Sure. And she's crying and she's, yeah, she's got the flashlight on her face. Yeah. Toward the end of the movie. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that was the monologue that I was doing. And, um, <laughs> I remember going in and doing this audition and prepping for it trying to think about how I was going to make myself cry for it. Wow. And I was, yeah. So, so can you make yourself cry? Oh, I did for that. Really? Yeah. Cool. Wow. I did for that. Okay. Um, so it sounds like you kind of killed the audition then. No, I no. Oh, Okay. I don't want to be like a spoiler. <laughs> I actually still to this day have no idea how they felt about my audition, but I know that it wasn't that they thought I was amazing because spoiler mm. alert, I did not get cast in the crucible. Oh shoot. <laughs> but I, but I went to my audition and I turned all the lights out Mm. for it. Um, I sat on the stage in a chair and I shined a flashlight on my face and I cried and I did the monologue and I remember actually feeling really good about it. Mm. Um, when they turned the lights back on, I remember what I remember is that I, I don't know what the theater director thought about it because she just kind of stared at me Mm. like she was so surprised. I remember her making comments in my theater classes, um, because we played a lot of games, mm-hmm. we did a lot of um, like improv things and all of that. And I remember there were a couple of times where she was like, she's so cute. Like she's so like friendly. And mm. I think she thought I was more shy okay, and just sweet. Mm-hmm. So I think when she had seen that audition, she was probably, it was probably the last thing that she expected to see out of me. Right. And I thought I was like spot on as far as auditioning for the crucible. So was that something like you were consciously trying to do is trying to break that stereotype or was it just, I just wanted to be right for the show. Right. Okay. Because I was so much more passionate about that kind of show than what I had done before. Mm. I mean, I was so excited to be a part of music man, but I was so much more passionate about this kind of show. Right. And I want to say that the show was only seniors and that's why I didn't make it. But actually some juniors made that show. Mm. Um, some of the people in my class and I didn't. And, um, I remember being sad about that, but I feel like I still just was like, yeah, it's just seniors that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I I wasn't super upset. I was a little bummed, but, um, I feel like I always wondered, I, I would love to know. And I would honestly love to know if, um, Mrs. Robbins even remembers that audition. Hmm. Because I think it's so funny that I did that. Right. I, I mean, can't even uh, picture myself doing that now. And I was so into it. Well, I'm, you know, I was going to say she probably sees <laughs> a million kids, you know, yeah. she's probably seen that, but I'm sure that you were one of the only that like turned out the lights and I set the I don't know if mood. I, I'm, maybe I scared her, but I was not mm. messing around. Right. And I remember her face when we turned the lights back on and she was <laughs> just like, she either thought I was a psycho or she hated it. Hmm. It's got to be, or she just well, was shocked yeah. that I would have done that. Sure. Gotcha. But it, but it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a fave either way. Cause you right. know, shoot. Well, anyway, um, coming from junior year, then going into senior year, you still did musicals. You were still in the drama area and everything like that. Right. Yeah. So at this point I, I was probably in theater three. I'm guessing that I did a theater class each year Okay. or maybe I, maybe I did too. I don't know. Yeah. But I also was big into dance too. I was take I like I took dance one through three, like I took theater one through three. Right. Okay. Um, I, I always have wanted to mix the two. I've always wanted, I've, I focused kind of equally on dancing and vocals. And I think because I've always been seen as the dancer, I feel like I've kind of always wanted to prove that I you am are. a vocalist too. Okay. Gotcha. That as well. But I feel like I've always kind of, you know, wanted to prove that I can do both. Yeah. Um, and again, I probably would be so much better if I'd had those voice lessons. Mm. I think we all feel that way. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like one, one thing Not that I've told us, you. Not me and you. We right. feel that way because we didn't have them. So. Yeah. And it's, it's like, I really wish I would have stuck with piano when I was younger yeah. and done voice lessons and everything like that. But, you know. Yeah. But my um, senior year, I was dancing a lot. I was still involved in theater. And then I was in that our senior musical, which was how to succeed in business. Without okay. really trying. So gotcha. Okay. Did you do any of the, the plays or anything like that? The extra ones? No. Okay. Yep. Cool. Just the musical. Perfect. Okay. Um, 
going through high school and everything, what were your like biggest takeaways from the shows that you did? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I think I was just happy to be involved. And I feel like I remember feeling a strong sense of belonging with, um, with my theater friends. I actually specifically didn't have, I'm trying to think of how I must have like looked to other people in high school and I was not crazy social, which is not like myself in Mm. high school. Yeah. Um, my closest friends, whoever I was dating at the time, none of them went to my same high school. Wow. So I was actually pretty in and out apart from, um, apart from doing theater. Okay. Uh, so I would stay later for theater rehearsals, but apart from that, like I had work release my senior year. I was gone a lot. Anytime Mm. there was an assembly, I would ditch (laughs) every single time. I don't think I saw a single assembly my, um, senior year. I don't think anyone can blame you for that. Which I've got a friend that could attest to this. We left for every single assembly besides, um, the talent show. We wanted to see the talent show. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. And we left for every single lunch period as well. Um, and then I had, so I had work release and then my classes literally, I remember were, I was in seminary at the time. Hmm. Um, I had a theater class, I had a ballroom class and I had a marketing class and that wow. was like my whole senior year. Awesome. So I had half my day off and I was just really in and out of high school. I was not super invested in extracurricular activities regarding high school. Gotcha. My closest friends were elsewhere. So, right. so I was passionate about theater, but that was... That was really all that stuck with me from high school. Cool. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's it shaped who you are as a person and performer and everything like that, too. Right? Yeah, there's a lot that I feel has shaped that. I actually feel like I just like kind of came into this world needing that. Hmm. I feel like I've always been a performer at heart. So Sure. Perfect. Well, and I, I wanted to touch on that, too, because after high school, you took a little bit of a break yeah. from theater. Um, is there any real rhyme or reason to that uh, was theater something that you always kind of had in the back of your mind or was it just like hey high school's over theater's over kind of thing I feel like I always I actually after high school really missed encore that was my big thing is I missed my relationships with my encore friends and so maybe I wasn't um super serious about theater at that time because my takeaway after high school was missing all those encore friends so and I was like, I'm too old now. Like it's like, I've kind of grown out of that. I missed my last year and, um, I just don't have that anymore. Right. And I never really thought about community theater. That was okay. never funny enough. Like that was never something that I thought about pursuing. I feel like my mind was just elsewhere after sure. high school. Perfect. Well, this is a perfect little cliffhanger. Why don't we take a break for a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll discuss your re-entrance into Midvale and community theater and everything like that. Okay. Sounds sound good? Sounds good. Perfect. We'll see you soon. As always, the Midvale Main Street Theater podcast is sponsored, funnily enough, by the Midvale Main Street Theater. (laughs) Check out new and exciting updates on everything going on at the Midvale Main Street Theater by going to www.midvaletheater.com or check them out on Facebook and Instagram at Midvale Main Street Theater. You can find show notes and much more by going to our podcast's Facebook page at facebook.com slash mmstpodcast. Special thanks to Ashley Howell, Joel Clark, and Matthew Petrucci for help making this show happen. I owe you guys the world. I've been Michael Howell, and this has been the Midvale Main Street Theater Podcast. The views expressed have been mine alone and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Midvale Main Street Theater, its owners, or volunteers. If you've liked what you've heard today, please consider finding the Midvale Main Street Theater Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or whatever podcast listener you're using and dropping us a five-star review. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at MMST Podcast. Thank you very much, and until next time, we'll see you.